Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Looking at Jackie Chan's Spartan X by Michael Golden. Ed, this is a bit of an oddity here today. I'm excited to dive into it because the backs of these has a little something special and that's what we're going to focus on. But first, tell us about Red Room. Another Big oddity. <laughs> Another oddity for us, man. Uh, if you're watching this video after uh, May 19th of 2021, that means Red Room comics are available and we printed up... Uh, over 100,000 of these things, man, between uh, the stuff that we have out there right now. Uh, issue one, get your hands on it. 64 pages, uh, complete self-contained story, and it's going to start coming out reliably every every four weeks, man. We've got to put issue two to bed uh, within a week or two, man. Got to write an editorial for that piece, and I have an extended gore gallery in there. So if you sent uh, some, some fan art, chance that uh, your stuff is going to see the light of day in, in, in the comic. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the sort of tagline that I associate with this comic. Jimmy, I introduced that problem to the world and we're looking at it in many different ways. Horror comic that couldn't have been told even 10 years ago. Uh, if you want to pre-order the comics, uh, you don't have a comic shop in town handy or whatever, um, hit the Fantagraphics website, my link tree in the description below. Obviously, I want you to support your local comic shop, so get it put on your pull list because each of these stories uh, is getting my comics making chops getting better every issue and I hope you guys stick uh, with the comic uh, through the entire run if you want to uh, read the comics ahead of time before they hit the paper edition patreon.com slash ed piscor three books get you the archive I have over 100 pages up there right now Spartan X, published by Image Comics. So I always like to show off my Image Comics contribution, Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive. This is available anywhere you buy books and comics. Uh, your comic shop can order this. You can get it from Amazon. Again, wherever you buy your comics, you can find this. And uh, you can find out how I made this comic on patreon.com slash jimrug, where I post a lot of my original art, a lot of my process, scripts, pretty transparent and very similar to what we do here on Cartoonist Kayfabe, talking about craft and process. You can find a lot more of that at patreon.com slash jimrug. So I'm not familiar with these, Jim. All right. This comes out, Ed, in the late 90s, I believe 1998. It started out at Topps Comics, and there are a couple issues. I think Topps published two or three issues, same material in color. So this is in black and white and it's on kind of a newsprinty like paper. It's, it's, I like the presentation quite a bit. Is there anything revealing in the indicia that lets us know, you know, who's getting the lion's share of, uh, the, 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 the royalties that come back when this thing sells? No. And I'm glad you mentioned that because Jackie Chan is obviously copyright Jackie, Jackie and Willie Productions. So Jackie Chan's likeness, you know, is his. Spartan X is copyright Little Eva Inc. And I don't know what that is. It seems like Michael Golden and Renee Witterstatter, uh, the editor co-creator, are behind this book. And I just don't know the answer to that. It's very hard for me to, to, uh, to answer because, you know, we've seen celebrities put their name on a comic book and retain a bunch of, you know, control or, or ownership over it. This doesn't seem that way. This feels like it's a Michael Golden kind of vehicle, but I could be wrong. It wasn't clear. I did look into that and try to understand it and couldn't, can't give you a definitive answer. I think it's a good question though, because it's murky here. Yeah. Um, but it does seem like a Michael Golden kind of thing. I was going to say job, except it's really serious Michael Golden art. Like it, he, he's not treating this like a job or like this opening sequence, for example, is Jackie Chan doing his stuff on a roller coaster. Could there be a harder <laughs> thing to draw than that? Yeah, man. My, Michael did this showing off. The thing about his art that always fa always fascinates me is uh, every stroke of the pen is it's completely deliberate. Now, I know there's an inker here, but mm -hmm. I'm sure he's penciling extremely tightly. Uh, and the person who's inking probably tracing a lot. You know, this looks like Michael Golden uh, in other iterations and shit. But like every line super deliberate so when you see stuff like that it's just painstaking painstaking stuff it is so elaborate uh one of the interesting parts of this comic for me is it is a jackie chan vehicle which means lots of acrobatics lots of figure work very dynamic and uh you know there, there are sequences i'm gonna spring ahead here uh there are sequences in here this is a nuclear arsenal 
that he is fighting on, Jackie Chan being, he is fighting on, and it's him like flipping around through these nuclear warheads from missile to missile, you know, rolling away as he dives on the floor. And all I could think about is there are, it's a very short list of cartoonists that are able to do figure work like this. It is really Michael Golden showing off because not too many people could come close to this kind of ability to do figures interacting in, in space and figures being very ac acrobatic and uh, flying around. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a wow kind of showcase for what he's able to do, you know, at his mature heights. Um, you know, there's certainly different stylistic stages of Michael Gullen's career, but this one feels just very, very precise. And uh, the reason that I wanted to look at this is the back matter. Mm. So kind of a cool story, pretty interesting to see a good depiction of Jackie Chan, that seems impossible in, in a description, and yet I think that Michael Golden really rises to a near impossible challenge. Look, there's even bloopers, like at the end of <laughs> Rumble in the Bronx and such movies. Probably uh, probably Jackie Chan's favorite version of those bloopers. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> he's, he's not getting carted off after that one. Uh, man, it's awesome. What a detail to think about putting that kind of stuff in, but it is a big part of Jackie Chan's persona character what we know him for what we expect when we see a jackie chan movie golden does really well of capturing that part but again the reason i wanted to show this off to cartoonist kayfabe is because of this back matter every one of these issues has a little bit of like how to make comics by michael golden golden served as like art director at marvel for a few years and that would have been i think a place where he would talk to young cartoonists and sort of give them some of this instruction you know how to tell a story more clearly uh, more dynamically, whatever the case may be. And so that's what you're going to get in these little backup sections. They're very short, unfortunately, but there's still some nuggets to pull out of them. And uh, the biggest takeaway I get that's consistent through all four chapters is this emphasis on clear storytelling. Um, seems like that should go without saying, but come on. It's the 90s and image <laughs> comics. Definitely clear storytelling isn't at the forefront. And uh, this very first installment is the promotional or the uh, the presentation art that he used to sell this concept. And so he talks a little bit about changes between like the promotional artwork and the character designs versus when he actually gets to the production side and what those changes, why those changes are made. So some of it is evolution of characters, if you're going to be drawing them over and over and over, but also considerations of how do these look licensed? What would a toy of this character look like? Things to take into account, and of course, Michael Golden has Bucky O'Hare. Like, he's gone through this process of licensing, of creating characters that will then spawn toys and animation. And so, you know, real considerations for a commercial artist. And it's, it's kind of insane, especially when you're dealing with... I mean, this is a Hollywood actor, so there's so much vanity. So you're never going to get things right the first time. Yeah, they're always going to want changes and stuff. And I see it, like in the in the no, the way he approaches the nose does not look that way in the final printed comic, even though we can recognize that as Jackie Chan so much. Uh, I would bet that he notes that too. Fans will recognize the character himself looks more like Jackie Chan now in the comic than in these sketches. So I mean, that I, stuff out. I mean, in a way, I think the opposite. Like on the previous page, there's like Drunken Master era Jackie Chan. Totally <laughs> looks like him, but but of course, Jackie Chan's vanity would not allow that to be uh, you know the final piece. How much does this face remind you of Todd McFarlane art? I think the, it's the heavy this, eyebrow. This too. Yeah. Like like of old school Todd McFarlane, but like Todd Mc, like this is the eyes are in proper perspective, not really skewed. There's good foundation underneath. And Uncle Todd's stuff would be kind of floating or whatever. His whole thesis, Uncle Todd and and Robin those guys, the idea was like better to do a monthly version of Art Adams and Michael Golden that's bad than to do two comics a year. Right. And that that has proven true for those guys. Yeah, pretty interesting insights there. Uh, some notes on, on covers. The next issue, he's actually going to get more detailed about cover design, but uh, just like a quick preview of some of the cover stuff and, and changes to those covers. The interesting thing is, I believe this is the actual cover to the tops version, and it's just mildly different. It's kind of the same compositional idea, but this one is revised and refined, and we'll see that a little bit in the uh, in the next one. And give you some time period, Savage Dragon 48 out at this time, and Altered Image, one of the first image crossovers. Oh yeah, I don't know that. Before Image Grand Design. <laughs>
then you see you know Jackie Chan plugs uh, on the back so kind of neat again Jackie Chan in a lot of ways I don't know how much he knows comics but really got lucky with Michael Golden being the guy who was attached to this or developed this you know I mean that's a that's a I can't think of somebody that would be able to do this better than Michael Golden does it. Sure. First time I heard of Jackie Chan was on a NES game. Like I did, he he had his own uh, NES tape, and I remember thinking like, who's this guy to be able to get his own name on a on a thing? Like like what is he? Pretty good, pretty good likenesses. No, yeah, the and expressions. You know, some different. That's what's hard whenever you do a likeness. It's not hard to do it once. Right. It's hard to uh, distort it and, and get a three quarters with him sneering or smiling. Yeah, or, and then all of those nuclear weapons. Wild environments. All right. So we're going to get back into our Michael Golden uh, notes here in the back. Oh, man. I would love to see him cartoon some stuff. That's really cool. Yeah, I think this is hand lettered too, and not a font. If you look closely, like the lettering is approaching um, uh, Tothian lettering skills, man. It's, it's very high level. Yeah, very refined. And again, talking about putting together your covers, same idea as storytelling. It's clarity. Um, you know, dynamic. Be dynamic. Be exciting. And he talks about that with this cover. This is issue two's cover. As he develops the composition and the idea, it's a bunch of guys fighting Jackie Chan, Spartan X. So you want Spartan X to be the prominent figure, but you also want to get a sense of the danger that, uh, you know, he's being overwhelmed by these numbers and then skew it a little bit, right. you know, make it even more like they're tipping over, like, like things are wrong, going wrong. He's good at that, man. Like, take a look at his 90s Batman covers. Uh, you can find a lot of cool uh, black and white uh, scans of that, sh that shit. And there's, there's so much going on, those covers. Uh, great sales tools. And they they definitely tell pretty cool stories. They intrigue you enough to want to crack the book open, put it that way. Yeah, which is all you can hope for, I think, at this point. Uh, but it's it's pretty great to see him, you know, just break this stuff down very clearly, very concisely, too. Yeah. Um, I would love to read 200 pages of this. Sure. But there is something to be said for being able to explain this clearly in a couple of brief sentences. You know, and again, talks about focus, talks about being able to clearly represent the idea and then heighten the sense of action and drama. You know, take that clear storytelling, but make it as dynamic as you possibly can. And uh, there's your cartoony Michael Golden walking back into his cave to go back to work on issue two. Patience is a viru. Mage showing up at Image at this time, the second volume of Mage. I like seeing all those ads. I was basically getting out of Image by this point. You know, late I was 90s. fully out. All I had was Savage Dragon. It was the only one I was still buying at yeah, this point. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was fully checked out, man. Uh, I'm getting prepared to go to art school, saving every penny to uh, sustain myself uh, when, when I go away. So I was fully checked out. Image wasn't interesting to me for five years at this point, I don't think. Yeah, I fell out of that Image stuff pretty quickly. You know what? Eric Larson, if I'm not mistaken, his publisher, is yeah. the publisher here. So, yeah. you know, we've talked about that era whenever he's kind of, I'm going to say, writing the ship, uh, trying to get it back, you know, in a and certain he, direction. And he would say it too. He said it on a few interview. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So, get to see some action sequences, fighting sequences, as he's meeting his counterpart. Look at these ruins. It's a lot of drawing in this, in, in this series. All right, so <clears throat> back to the Michael Golden installment. And now we're getting into page storytelling. And with the uh, with the panel designs, it's the same approach as cover, but the panels have to work with the preceding and uh, following panels. But it's the same kind of concept of like that clear storytelling, dynamic, and serving the story. I like seeing his layouts with your word balloons for placement. I always want to uh, point out the way that placement works and this idea I have that if you took away the art, and took away the numbers in the word balloons that you would still be able to, you should still be able to read them. Like yeah. you should still be able to say which, what order those balloons go in. Also love seeing like his really rough sketches for those layouts. Yeah. He's some, such a clean artist. Some of those ninjas that makes me think of Jim Rugg uh, ninjas. <laughs> I'd take that. <laughs> wow. Not going to hurt my feelings with that. That right there. Just insane. Look at how tight those... I think these are pencils. Yeah. You know, yeah, it looks like it. Give you an idea of how tight those things are. It makes me think that he's probably one of those cats that bust out that like super... That non-repro blue 
to do some like underdrawing and then basically inks with the pencil to then pass it to the inker. You know, uses one of those 0.3 millimeter le uh, gray leads so that you can get the finest lines possible. And he gets into things like emotional context, you know, and how much characterization you can put into these kinds of things. So another one of the considerations that is added uh, whenever he's putting together a composition is how much character, you know, of the character can you get into that composition? Yeah. You know, a very different dynamic here than whenever you see this fight sequence. It's a little bit askew. The character's much more uh, different pose. Those are those bits of that describe the character in this drawing. And if you can really do that across panels, it's next level stuff. It's true. All right, one more installment of this, and one of the, I think, more useful installments is in this final issue. Yeah, I can't wait to see. It's funny to think that this was originally published, part of it, in color. Look at, like, this kind of sequence, it looks like the it's Luca built, effect. Yeah, it looks like it's built for color in some ways, man. Like, I think that could help help, help us out a lot with the reading experience. The multi-fists in a panel, pretty fun. Punching a lion, like, a creature <laughs> in the face. <laughs> It's pretty good for what you would want out of a Jackie Chan, and especially, like, what could you do in a comic that you can't do in a Jackie Chan movie? And some of these, like, creatures that he's fighting, I think, are a good example of take advantage of the comic book pages, which we used to hear before CGI and uh, superhero movies became the norm. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure this is some kind of, like, movie pitch thing that, like, I could see more of this exist. I mean, that, what is that Keanu Reeves shit, but, like, some kind of movie pitch? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, that's been going on forever. Right, right. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think of all the way back to, like, Paul Glacey's Masters of Kung Fu. It's a little bit of the reverse movie where you're pulling actors and referencing them. <laughs> but it still kind of feels like you're looking at, you know, movies on paper. Um, so this last installment, he's talking about, like, still storytelling in panels, but setting up scenes. You know, and if you... What props, same as he was describing characters and how you put characterization into, say, poses and body language. In this case, like what props are necessary to build these backgrounds and to set these scenes uh, from tone to location. And if you get that right, maybe you only have to draw that elaborate background once and you can then have speed lines in it because you've established the, uh, the setup. And one of the great sequences for this is a car backing away and then pulling forward out, you know, basically getting out of this scene. That's a hard thing to draw. I would not want to see that in a script, but he does it perfectly. You know, you see him backing up in this junkyard and switching direction in these roughs as he pulls away. Prop in this case being the escape vehicle. Right. And, and probably a couple of the other vehicles that are scattered around these ruins that he's getting to. Just marveling at those pencils, man. It's really fun. I love seeing this kind of stuff too, the super roughs, like thumbnail kind of roughs but you can still see the figures being built there All and of volume. the dynamic movement of those figures that's a really good one the running pose yeah. you see all the vehicle references reminds me of that gi joe issue <laughs> <laughs> makes me not the yeah, order of battle or whatever and you know mentions how these scenes work and having establishing shots so whenever you turn the page to a new scene using establishing shot to make very clear what that you've switched locations or switched times or switched the characters that you're following in that particular piece it's so sad because he's alluding to like future issues and stories and we don't get any more this is the complete series that that was published i don't know if maybe a little bit more art exists but as far as i know no more of this was published anywhere so Little glimpse into some of uh, some of Michael Golden's thought process and how he makes comics, and it is very instructive. It feels like something that he probably told a thousand, you know, young artists at Marvel through the years, because it's pretty clear to understand the point. I would love to read more of that. There's a um, art book of Michael Golden's called Excess, and I think he gets into some process in it. So. Maybe we'll take a look at that in some future episode. But, uh, man, we've been covering a lot of Michael Golden lately, Ed. Yeah, man. Listen, he's a, he's a foundation cornerstone of the image guys who were the big dogs when we were coming up and decided to become cartoonists ourselves. So it makes perfect sense, man. It's something that, uh, you know, I, I was talking off air. I'm a mark for this. 
like I'm kayfabing myself with Michael Golden because I knew his work. But once we started looking at it, I've been looking at more and more and it's relatively new to me. Yeah. And that foundation that you describe is crystal clear, but not something that I was doing at the time because I come in when image starts, right. you know, and so like. It's nice to go back now and see some of these, uh, some of the ingredients for those guys. Yeah, I mean, like I, I seen, I know all the popular stuff, you know, the noms, the this, the that, the that, but like this, way under my radar, man. It's one of the great things cool. of comics. Once you start digging, it's like it never ends. That's goddamn right, man. And uh, in fact, uh, I just happen to sell right now, so we got to go digging for <laughs> comics ourselves. <laughs> K favors like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there? Join me on Patreon.com slash Jim Rug, where you can see how I make comics, lots of my original art, hard to find and out of print zines, and mini comics that you can download. All of that and more at Patreon.com slash Jim Rug. Red Room Comics are in the wild as of May 19th, 2021. Scoop up your copy at your local comic shop, ASAP. Get it put on your pull list. That first issue, triple size compared to your average comic. 64 pages, a complete story setting up the entire universe that uh, all the Red Room stories will exist uh, within. Um, like I said, every story so completely self-contained. Uh, you can pre-order the comics at the Fantagraphics website. Four issues of that so far. Uh, link is in... Um, the link tree in the description below this video. Also, my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor, is where you can read these comics ahead of time. And there are 100 pages up there uh, right now. Put new strips up every Tuesday. What else, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we have going on and coming out in 2021. You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jimmy, give them one lesson of marching orders, man. We're going to be on our way. Make more comics. <laughs>